Hey from the kitchen folks! Today I'm going to make some seriously hoppy sparkling apple wine. But before we go any further, I need to pick some hops. So the hop vine extends just beyond that hanging basket. It goes all the way along here. And as you can see, it's pretty laden with lovely hot flowers for my brews. And there we go. So the easiest way to do this, rather than picking the flowers off the bush, is to cut sections of the vine that have got flowers on. Put them on a table, like this over here, and then sit down at the table and pick. It's a lot easier to do it sitting down than it is standing up so then it's just a case of picking the flowers off and popping them in a box which I've got on the floor down here and I'm going to be doing this along with my helpful wife who doesn't want to appear on camera for the next hour or so well that's the hops picked and here they are Right, let's weigh what I've got. That is exactly 1.6 kilograms of hops. Exactly. That's amazing. Okay, so there's my 1.6 kilos of hops, and I'm now going to get these into these saucepans. So I've tried to avoid getting bugs in these, but it's impossible really. So let's just say that there might be a bit of extra protein in here. Um, I was going to soak them like I would do blackberries to get bugs out, but um, if I do that, I'll lose some of the hoppy aromas and flavours in the water, so I'm not going to do that. And I need to use these as soon as possible because I've got no capacity to put them anywhere in terms of storage. I've got no room in my freezer. Uh, even if I dry them, I haven't got anywhere to put them really. So I just want to get them processed now and, and used. Okay, there's my hops. I think I need a bigger saucepan, to be honest. So into each of these pans now, I'm going to add spring water. And I'm just going to fill the pans up as far as I can. I obviously don't want the hops to come out and over the top. So that's the current situation. And now I need to get the gas on and the heat on low. So what I'm going to do now is make a hops tea. So this is going to very slowly come to a boil and once it's started to simmer I'm going to turn the heat off and then I'm leaving these overnight. By leaving them overnight I'm giving it a chance to steep so all of the flavours and the aromas come out of the hops into the tea and I'm also giving it the chance to cool down because my fermentation vessel that I'm going to use this time is a plastic one. Hey folks it's the next day let's have a look at the hops. So. I've managed to get them now into two pans. This is really concentrated hop tea. They've been in there 24 hours and I'm now going to get them from here into the fermenting vessel just there. So my fermenting vessel of choice today is the Beast. So this is my Kegland 30 litre flat bottom firmzilla. I'm probably going to be looking at about 25 litres or thereabouts in here. It's a great fermenting vessel though for large quantities. What I especially like about it is the fact that you can see what's going on, that it's clear, and that's something that you don't get with a bucket. So I'm going to begin this brew by tipping what's left of this spring water into the fermenting vessel. And that has brought me to four and three quarters, pretty much, uh, in terms of litres. So there's a nice handy uh, sticker that you put on the side, it tells you where to line it up so you can work out how much you've got in there. 
So I've got my hops here, I need to transfer them with this into the sieve and then squeeze them with a wooden spoon. So what I'm trying to do is squeeze all the flavours out of the hops without pushing the hops through the sieve. I'm not trying to make uh, apple sauce like I do when I push apples through the sieve. I'm really just trying to press the hops to get all the liquid out of them. And already after just one squeeze of a tiny amount it smells incredibly hoppy in there. So yeah, I don't need to put the hops in there as well because that would just be overload. So I've got a very long way to go considering I've got that and that. So I'll be back to you in a little while when it's done. I've switched to a potato masher because it's easier than the wooden spoon. Still a big job though, I'll show you how big a job. I'm now on 11 litres. I've emptied this one. That's that. That's going to go on the gardener's compost. I've still got that one to do. Oh, send help. <laughs> so there. Done. I'm going to have to go and pop that on the raised beds at the back. I've got 14 litres in there so far. I need to fill up with apple juice and some sugar. I put the top on just to keep any contaminants out such as fruit flies or whatever. I need to do a few more bits and bobs now but first I need to have a cuppa. Okay next job is to get my apples in and my apples are apple juice from Concentrate this is the turbo cider method. If you've not heard of turbo ciders, it's basically using apple juice from concentrate to make your ciders rather than the hassle of doing it from apples. There's a Facebook group called Turbo Ciders for All, which is really handy and helpful if you're wanting some inspiration in that direction. There's another group called Rocket Fuel Ciders for All, which this one might end up going in because I'm probably looking at making this into a rocket fuel type drink, probably over 8.5%, but we'll see. I'm not quite sure yet. So as I mentioned, it's called a turbo cider because it's quick and it is quick. A lot easier than pressing apples or steaming apples. So if I just take the lid off, in we go. So this is the first litre, got another nine to go. I'll be back in a bit. Okay, that's all my apples in. And I'm now on the 23 and a half litre mark. This is probably going to end up at about 28 litres altogether. Right, my next job is to get some brew sugar into this pan. I want to get about three kilos in there. So the brew sugar is basically dextrose, dextrose monohydrate. And the yeast allegedly has an easier time breaking this down than standard caster sugar. And therefore the yeast becomes less stressed and if it's less stressed, you're less likely to get any off flavours. And the off flavours is when your homebrew tastes like homebrew. So I think this has been a worthwhile investment. It's slightly more expensive than normal sugar, but I definitely find that my brews taste better for using this rather than using caster sugar. Right, I've got 3.1 kilos in that pan. I think that will do. So I'm now gonna cover the brew sugar with spring water. And again, I also use spring water and not tap water because I find it, it makes it taste better. The tap water is chlorine and it's given me some weird tasting brews in the past. Even worse in the UK, they're going to start adding fluoride to our water, which is obviously good for teeth, but for brewing, I can't see it doing any good. So I'm just going to give this a little stir around. I don't want it to be stuck to the bottom. That's it, it's nice and loose now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit of heat to this. I don't need to bring it to the boil. It dissolves quite easily, this sugar. So as soon as a bit of heat gets to it, it will start to go clear. And that's all I want. Okay, while I'm waiting for the sugar to dissolve, I just need to add a couple more ingredients into this. The first one is pectolase. Now this will help this to achieve clarity. And I'm going to put a good heaped dessert spoonful in and half again 
and this will help this to become clear any peptic enzymes in there that will cause cloudiness will get basically dealt with. I'm now going to add a Camden tablet block and this comes from some Harris Pure Brew which also includes yeast nutrient so that's the next bit that goes in. I feel like a drug dealer with these bags. Yeah, I sell it by the spoonful, mate, you know. Yeah, do you want a spoon? Yeah. So I'm going to put a generous one of those in. And then I'm going to put another generous one of those in. If you use something like this, it gives the yeast more to feed on. The yeast is less likely to get stressed and therefore you won't get off flavours or you shouldn't get off flavours. Oh, it smells monstrously hoppy. So the sugar has dissolved in the water. I'm pouring it in now. And I'm now up to 29 litres. Okay, so you can see it's just beneath the 29 litre mark. And you can also see from here that the temperature of the liquid is 28, which is eight degrees too warm for me to take the original gravity. So I'm going to ladle some out into the hydrometer tube and put that in the fridge to get it down to 20 so I can take the original gravity. So I'll try and do this as neatly as possible. Okay, that's enough. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and come back to it in a little while. In the meantime, I can get on with putting yeast into my brew now. So my yeast of choice today is this Lalvin ICV D47. It's a yeast which doesn't leave too dry a flavour, so I'm hoping for something which is either going to be medium dry or just slightly drier than medium dry, but not dry dry. We'll see what happens though. I've got my dessert spoon here, so I'm going to fill my dessert spoon in the container, sprinkle that on, and then I'm going to do the same again. That's it, well, almost same again, and just sprinkle that in. So I'm just going to give this a little agitation so the yeast doesn't all stick to the um, top and that it'll actually sink in, hopefully. I don't want all the yeast floating on the top. I want it to mix. And believe you me, the yeast will enjoy this because it's warm, it's sweet, and there's nutrient in there. Fermentation will not take very long at all to happen. So this fermentation vessel comes with its own airlock integrated in. Um, you've, I've actually had to seal it with some blue tack around it because it wasn't completely airtight, but it is now I've done that. And then it locks in place with this. It's actually a very, very good system. You've just got to make sure you don't cross thread it. That's it. Right, I'm going to leave this and we'll come and have a look at it when fermentation has begun. I'll give you a rough idea how long that takes. Okay, this has been going for half an hour and you can see that there is uh, the beginnings of a Krausen forming and some activity on top just there. The bubbler's not yet going, but this is now cooled to a temperature where I can take the original gravity. So let's do that. And it's not as high a original gravity as I was hoping for. So it might not end up being a rocket fuel. We could be looking at a session cider. Um, actually, no, it's not too bad. It's 1.060 exactly. 1.060. And just an update 12 hours later. You can see we've got activity. We've got no Krausen but we've got definite fermentation happening. So here it is, after two days now, you can see that there is a nice thin Krausen, which is well covered. It's a, it's a very wide vessel this, so that's quite an advantage. The Krausen goes and spreads out rather than builds up. So I'm confident that it isn't gonna react any further than this. There won't be any flood out and the bubblers go in nicely. So the next film from me will be in about two to three weeks time when it comes to either racking or bottling. So I'll catch you then. 
Morning from the utility room folks. It's a busy day, I'm off to work, but before I do that, I want to address my hoppy cider and I want to rack it off into Demijohns. So here it is. It's been in this large fermenting vessel now for five weeks. It fermented nicely for three weeks. For the last two weeks, it's not done anything and it's now time to clear it um, by racking it into other Demijohns. I was hoping it would clear naturally as it is, but it hasn't done. And I don't really want to add finings um, to make it any clearer, so I'm going to rack it and see if that will help me to achieve something which is a bit of a clearer brew. So I've got my extra long siphoning tube today, so hopefully this will help me do this without too much drama and uh, too much mess, fingers crossed. So I'm just going to undo one of these caps on the fermenting vessel. I'm not sure how low down to push this. There doesn't seem to be really any sediment at all. If there is, it's right in the very bottom. So I think I can risk going down quite a way with this. I'm just trying to estimate what that will do from the top. Let's see what happens. Right kids, wish me luck. And there we go. As you can see, that's coming through nicely. So this is the bottom of the siphoning tube just here. That's the sediment. It has just gone into it a tiny bit, but that's not such a bad thing. That's fine. So here's the first one. It's done. It looks all right. It's a little bit cloudy, obviously. Um, some sediment has come through into this one because the siphoning tube was uh, just into the sediment line. But it's not a bad thing. It should settle. And I'm hoping in the demijohns it will clear. Now, if it comes up, to a toss up between it being clear or being sparkling I'd rather it be sparkling because I could clear it with finings but if I clear it with finings then it runs the risk of it dragging the yeast out so it won't sparkle so what I might end up doing is clearing some of it and not clearing some of it with finings if it doesn't clear naturally let's just see what happens eh? so I've got my airlocks um, here to keep any contaminant out I've just got these sanitised that's going into here so this one's now done, and I just put this one to one side. It's looking okay to be honest, I'm fairly happy with this. So here's the second one done, I'm going to get another airlock in. So while I'm waiting for this to come through, I just need to ask you, are you following my Facebook page, Moss Home and Garden? If you're not, please do. Are you following me on Instagram, Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S? Please do, because you'll get updates from all the different social media formats. And finally, have you subscribed to my YouTube page for Moss Home and Garden? I'm guessing a lot of you have, because that's why you got here. But if you haven't, please do so. If you hit the red subscribe button and then click on the bell, you'll get notifications when I upload future films. Most of my films at the minute are coming up on Monday afternoons, so it's kind of like a weekly release. But that might change uh, over winter to a more regular or a more irregular schedule. But if you subscribe, you'll know when I do upload. Thanks very much. Okay, it's not that exciting watching me fill five or six demijohns up. So I'm going to knock this film off at this point um, and I'll come back to you when it's all finished. Um, there we go, bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that this is now over. So here's what I've ended up with. I've got five and a half demijohns. The half, I think I'm going to run through my air still tomorrow, but I'll have five demijohns left over. So the next film you're going to see from me will either be bottling or clearing, depending on what I decide to do. I don't know yet. Anyway, I'll catch you then, folks. Good afternoon from the kitchen folks, it's bottling day for my hoppy cider. Let's have a look at it. Nice lot of bottles there, but here's the star of the show. So I've just got three of the gallons, so I've got five gallons all together. This is three, and as you can see that there is some definite opaqueness to it. You can, uh, you can see through that, it's not clear by any means. So I'm going to experiment a little bit today. 
I've got 18 750ml bottles, mostly champagne, sparkling wine, prosecco, but a couple of beer bottles as well. I'm going to do six flavoured as exactly as they are. I'm going to do six with a vanilla flavour and six with a coconut flavour. I've then got another gallon, which I haven't got up here at the minute, which I'm going to clear with finings. And then I've got another gallon, which is upstairs, and wine style, I'm going to leave that one in secondary for a year and then see what it's like in a year. So I'll do an update film in a year's time, but I thought it'd be quite nice and interesting to compare the difference of them all. So here's my bottles, all recycled. Before I can start filling my bottles, I need to add some priming sugar. And this is just standard household caster sugar. I'm going to add a level one of these, which represents a good generous heaps teaspoon. And one of those will go inside each bottle. The priming sugar is designed to be eaten by the yeast, which is still in suspension in there. It will cause a fractional fermentation, nothing to worry about in terms of the ABV. But what it will do is it will create a tiny bit of CO2. The CO2 will create pressure in the sealed bottle and the pressure is what will give this, fingers crossed, a fizz. And then for my first image on, it's crooked bung out. Siphoning tube in. Note that I'm holding the tube in place with this very handy clip. The bottom of the tube is just above what is a very fine line of sediment, but that's fine. If it draws any up, it doesn't matter because the first bit that comes out is going into the hydrometer tube. Let's do it. Very dry and very tasty, very hoppy. Almost tobacco. Wow. Yeah, I like. Really, really nice flavour. If you like your IPAs, if you like strong elderflower wine, I think you'd like this. Yeah. I should get exactly six bottles from each Demi John, hopefully. And there we go. Spot on. Bubbles in the siphoning tube. Tell me that that's over, just as that bottle filled up. Perfect. Okay, I've now got to repeat the process that you've just seen twice more. It's not that exciting to watch again, so I'll be back to you when I've filled all the bottles. And there they all are. 18 full bottles. I've got the hydrometer tube full. And oh look what I've got here. <laughs> There's a cheeky brewer's reward. So it's my old Bounsley Beer Festival glass. I saw a little nifter. I don't do uh, half a pint of cider in the afternoon, but uh, let's see how it goes. That's really, really nice. Citrusy, hoppy. I mean, massively there. It really complements the apple. Hop cider is a really, really a good idea. And this has actually made me think that the one I've got upstairs clearing naturally. I might do as a still cider, just as a sort of like, you know, just as a thing, because I've never done one before. Why not? I've got all these here. So yeah, I'll do the one upstairs, which is going to clear naturally. You know, I'm literally thinking of leaving it for a year, leave it there, like winemakers do. Um, I'll do that one as a still cider. I've still got one more damage on that I want to do, which I'm going to clear. And I want to compare how it carbs when it's been cleared compared to these ones, which are slightly cloudy. But anyway, I need to get back on with these now. Oh, that's nice. That is so nice. So these six bottles I'm not going to do anything with. They're staying the flavour that they are. These six bottles are going to become coconut flavour using my protein flavour drops. And these six bottles are going to become vanilla flavour also using my protein flavour drops. So I'm going to take the final gravity now to determine the alcohol by volume of this brew. And I'm more than happy with how that sank. 
and this has finished on a final gravity of 0 0.996. I'm just going to work out the alcohol by volume of this brew. So I take the original gravity of 1.060, I deduct from that the final gravity of 0 0.996, and that equals 0 0.064. I'm going to multiply this by 131.25 and that gives us a final alcohol by volume of 8.4%. Fabulous! And still technically a cider because it's under 8.5%. ka -ching. Okay, I'm going to flavour my ciders with one full pipette into each bottle of the flavour drops. And that is ample because they are extremely strong. And I think the flavours of coconut and vanilla, which I've chosen today, will complement the hops very nicely. Okay, here's my bottles. And now it's time to get the bungs in. So I've got my bungs softening in very hot water which makes them a bit more malleable and easier to push into the bottles. That said, it can still be a mission, so I use a glove for doing this. And that one's gone in. Yeah, okay. So it's not mega exciting watching me push a load of bungs into bottles, considering that I've got 18 bottles here. So I'll come back to you in a minute. Okay, that's the bottles bunged. So now it's time to add cages, which are an essential safety item. So when carbonation takes place in the bottle, when CO2 is produced, it builds up pressure inside the bottle. Without the cage, the bung becomes a missile. Okay, so just get these on there. So I've got another 16 to do because one of them was a flip top. I'll see you in a minute. Done. And I think I've got repetitive strain injury. Oof. Right, I've made my bottle labels in a simple Microsoft Word template. I'm just going to print these off. Okay, I've now got to label my bottles up. So I like to take a little bit of pride in what my bottles look like. I'm obviously taking care of the content inside, so I try and present them quite nicely. Not the most imaginative of labels, but they're functional. And I don't forget what I've got. Anyway, you don't need to watch me do all of these. I will be back in just a moment. And here they all are. Nicely labelled and ready to go upstairs. For conditioning. Welcome back to the kitchen folks. I've got my fourth demijohn of hopped apple cider. Here it is. It's in exactly the same conditions as the other ones that I've just bottled. This one I'm going to try and clear with wine finings and I'm going to see if it is a choice of being a clear cider or a sparkling cider. Hopefully I can achieve both, but let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm going to take the bung out, siphoning tube in. So once again, I've got the tube held steady with the clip and the bottom of the pipe is in the bottom of the demijohn. Let's rock and roll. Okay, so that's going in nicely. So while that's going in, I'm going to add some of bottle A of clear it wine finings from Young's. So I'm going to add the equivalent of probably, can you have a heaped teaspoonful of liquid? I don't think so. So let's say one and a half teaspoons of liquid has just gone into that. And I'm now going to let the rest of this uh, siphon through into this demijohn. And when siphoning is complete, I shall leave it for an hour. So I'm just giving it a little bit of agitation because I want the finings to mix properly, which I think they have. I'm not used to seeing a foamy head when I do the finings, so I don't usually do that. Anyway, right, I'm going to leave this one for an hour, then I'm going to add bottle B, then I'm going to leave it for a few days. 
Welcome back, an hour has passed. Let's see what difference findings there have made. And as you will see, they've made no difference whatsoever. So I'm now gonna put this into the original damage on that it was in with some findings B. This time I don't need to be concerned with siphoning, it's just a straight pour. So here goes. I shall pour half in. And now I'm going to add findings B. So again, similar amount to findings A. I'll do. And then the rest of this goes. Lovely stuff. And there we go. Okay, I'm gonna leave this for a few days and then come back to it for bottling. So I'll catch you then. So just a quick clearing update, um, because this is remarkable. This has been about four hours since I added the findings and it is completely and utterly clear. I've never seen anything clear as quickly as that before. So I think it's fairly safe to say that I shall be bottling this either tomorrow or the day after. So here's the Demijohn, which is the one I'm not going to put findings through and I'm just going to leave to clear naturally and drink as a still cider. That's in my conditioning room where I've got lots of other kit. So my final gallon of hoppy cider, which I cleared with findings, is now here. And I've bottled this in exactly the same way as the other ones. But with this one, I've added some peach, my protein flavor drops flavoring. So this is a peach hoppy cider. I haven't recorded the whole film segment of bottling it again, because that's a bit pointless, but there it is. And here it goes for the next month. There it is. And there's the other hopped cider above it from left to right. Plain, vanilla hopped and coconut hopped. So these are my conditioning shelves. The temperature controlled shelves, which will keep these bottles at a constant temperature between 19.5 and 20.5. There's a thermometer at the back down there. Zoom into it. That little silver thing there is a thermometer. And it's connected to a thermostat plug down there, which is connected to a wall-mounted electric radiator just there. So if the, tom if the temperature of the thermometer drops below 19.5, it turns the plug on, which turns the heater on, and when it gets to 20.5, it turns it off. So works really effectively, it's good for conditioning, and that's where my ciders will now condition for the next month. So the next film that you see from me will be opening and tasting in a month's time. Catch you then, folks. Good evening from the kitchen folks. It's my hopped apple cider opening night. As ever, I'm quite excited about this one. It's been in the bottle for a month and I can see looking at the bung, I don't know if you can tell, it's raised by a millimeter. So fingers crossed, it's gonna have a sparkle. Now it's not cleared cleared, but it's definitely looking okay. I mean, it's not completely clear, but um, it's, it's pretty damn good to be honest. It doesn't look bad at all. So what I'm looking for is something that is going to be sparkling, that's going to smell nice and taste nice. That's the most important thing, obviously. If I can get most of those things, I'll be happy. So I'm just going to get the cage off and the bung out. Am I going to get a pop? Oh, yes. Look at that vapour. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, great stuff. Let's have a look. Oh, I'm so happy. That looks good. That is beautiful. Have a listen. Okay, actually, it's very quiet. It's there though. Anyway. Yeah, cider with a head. Is that the hops effect? Who knows? Interesting one, isn't it? It's better than a lager. It smells incredibly hoppy. The hop smell comes through like way more than the cider smell does. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to get in. Oh, 
that's absolutely beautiful that really is nice if you'd give me this blind and said what do you think that is I might have even said elderflower wine because it has got that flavour it's like three quarters elderflower wine one quarter IPA American hoppy IPA in flavour it's really nice very Moorish I would say medium dry not it's not too dry it's about a medium dry gorgeous absolutely fantastic this is something I will definitely definitely do again next year after all I'm gonna have even more hops next year because the hop plant just gets bigger and bigger and bigger so anyway cheers folks I've got the other ones which are flavored so I'll just do a review of the flavors after I've done this film I won't do the full opening and everything else I'll just give you a, a, a basically a talk through of what they taste like as well anyway it's been a pleasure cheers folks so I'm just opening the coconut flavoured one now. Oh, beautiful. Lots of life in it. it. Smells amazing. It smells like Malibu. Okay, let's see what the coconut tastes like. Oh, lovely. That complements it really well. And the flavour drops have made it quite sweet. I would say that's a medium sweet cider. So we've gone from medium dry to medium sweet just by the addition of the flavor drops. The coconut is the dominant flavor now. Hops in second place, cider in third place. What's nice though is the contrast between the sweetness of the coconut and the dry, scrapey, punch in your mouthness of the hops. There's definitely a, a, something going on there, like an integration. It's nice, it's really good. Okay, so we've got the other flavours to try next. Okay, I'm just opening the vanilla flavoured hop cider. Oh, satisfying. Oh, you can smell the vanilla as well. The My Protein flavour drops are absolutely superb. Okay, let's see what this one's like. Hmm. Now, this one's more medium and there's more of a balance in the flavour between the hops and the vanilla. The vanilla's not coming through as an overriding flavour like the coconut was. It's quite balanced actually. It's very well balanced. It's very nice. It works well together. Hmm. One more flavour to try. Right, evening folks, it's now my peach hoppy cider opening night. Oh yes, beautiful. Oh, teenage kicks. And once again, a massive heed. Oh, smells beautiful, the hops and the peach in equal measure. Mmm, let's see what it tastes like. Very nice. Mmm. And again, the peach isn't overpowering, so it balances nicely with the hops. It's a medium sweet. It's got a good flavour. It's obviously got a good uh, sparkle. It smells nice. It's a, it's a winner. I mean, I'm more than happy with the ciders that I've produced that I've got hops in. In terms of, like, order of preference, I think I'm going to go with the original hoppy flavour first before I added anything else to it. And I'm gonna go with that first because I do like the kind of elderflower IPA quality to it on its own. And it really didn't need tinkering with. It was only because I produced so much of it that I didn't want to have the same drink over and over and over again because I get a bit fed up with it. So original first, followed by vanilla, followed by peach, followed by coconut. That's the order I'm gonna put them in. Anyway, folks, it's been a pleasure as always. I'll catch you on the next brew. <sighs> the film that you've just watched is a Moss Home and Garden production. You can find more by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk I'd just like to say thank you very much for supporting my YouTube channel and for watching my films. It really is very much appreciated. 
If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in order to receive future updates about the home and garden films which I upload. You can find my YouTube channel by going to www.mosshomeandgarden.co.uk. Please click on the red subscribe button. When you've done that, a little bell will appear. If you press that also, then you'll get future updates about the films which I upload. If you like my films, if you like my style of filming, then you might also like my travel channel, which you will find by going to youtube.com forward slash Stuart Moss or typing www.mosstravel.tv. Again, if you could subscribe to that channel, it would be hugely appreciated. If you'd like to get Moss Home and Garden updates on Facebook, then please open Facebook and do a search for Moss Home and Garden and you will find the page. If you like the page, then you will get future updates on there. And if you'd like to connect on Instagram for home, garden and travel photography, as well as some stories, then my username is Stu Moss, S-T-U-M-O-S-S. -S. If you'd like to connect on Twitter, then my username is at Stuart Moss. And if you'd like to contact me about film usage or any other issue, please just email me on stewmosshomegarden at gmail.com. Once again, thank you very much for supporting my channel, for watching my films. I do appreciate it. I'd just like you all to have a great day.